Everything substantial I've ever learned, I learned through being in my body. I'm a dancer, a student of yoga. This is my process. When I dance, I recover the ability for my mind to inhabit my whole body. All my senses become active, spontaneously responding to the changing textures of my internal environment. Through my senses, my mind can feel, listen, and abide in the intelligence of the body tissues. This living fully inside the sense and body is remembered rather than learned. In the womb, and for a short period after birth, the body, mind, and senses develop and function simultaneously. So this uncontrived, pre-verbal integration of the body and mind through the senses is a natural capacity for all humans. The awakening of this intelligence through the senses so that my mind can reach out and feel with more acuity the world around me and listen more deeply to the sensuous language of nature herself is what I refer to as embodiment. There are very many different approaches, Eastern and Western approaches, to the process of embodiment. And while they may be radically different, both in means and aspirations, the places where they cross-pollinate provide a vast field of explorations, where both ancient and modern seeds of possibility have a chance to symbiotically coexist, ripen in intelligence, ultimately to sprout again into the fertile ground of further explorations. I am deeply grateful to all the yogis, artists, therapists that are tirelessly exploring, informing, and guiding their peers in these somatic and body-mind practices. My dance training was a classical conservatory training where you study long hours a day via repetitions of external shapes and movements. We are copying an idealized external form and correcting it by looking at a mirror. Interestingly, yoga training nowadays tends to follow a similar approach. An external pursuit to achieving a particular skill. I noticed my physicality was deeply affected by the buildings the forms were taught in. These man-made structures deeply affected not only my sense of space, lines, rhythms, volumes, but also my mind, my emotions. Though in accordance with the laws of nature, and perhaps even inspired by the grandeur of her beauty, I started to notice that these idealized forms, which I had now embodied as my means of expressions, were out of touch with the sensuous world, and thereby of my own self. I felt fragmented. This is how I trained, and I got injured a lot. I also got really bored, probably the reason why I stand on my head, and at times deeply sad. I felt like uh, rather than sensuously inhabiting my body and exploring the natural world within and without, I was enforcing my body-mind into yet another idea. While I could appreciate the beauty of a newly distorted body or correctly aligned body, my sensing self was not involved in the discovery. It felt contrived. But through simple but profound methods in yoga, I sensed how much of my human capacities laid dormant in my dancing and in experiencing life. I started exploring different modalities to reapproach both, all of which mm, emphasized learning experientially through my body. I started to remember, to connect to a deeper field of sensitive intelligence greater than my own self-reflected image. I wanted to feel the rhythms of the earth, the tides, the seasons, I went to nature to discover her body-mind, 
her intelligence. Reaching out through nature, through my recovered senses, I became aware that my body-mind could move freely between the inner and outer landscapes. There was a continuum in the silence beyond the confines of human thought. I started to discover a more direct contact with the sensitive intelligence of the living Earth. I became aware that nature was inside me, too. Her rhythms, her qualities, her tides, and in this sensuous, embodied approach. I caught myself dancing free of pain, with a newly discovered sense of what it means to be human. We are all born dancers of life with a natural capacity to feel the intelligence of the living Earth. But we need to consciously step out of abstracted, mind-made structures, architectural, intellectual, cultural, to listen and respond to these kinds of wisdom. Through attentive touch, awakened curiosity and a sense of play, we can create profound contact between ourselves and the life around us. My learning experience, and the one I'm attempting to share with students, has to do with recovering the ability to live fully in the senses, to be present, embodied, responsive. Starting with the breath, we listen to her qualities, her sound, her depths. In doing so, we become aware of places in the body where she may not move so freely. When we listen attentively through the breath, through sound and sensation, we start to notice when the sound stops, when the breath stops. This usually signals a blockage, a tension in the body-mind, an unconscious hold or habit. And the body has such a great capacity to adapt that we will often compensate loss of mobility in one area by overworking another. With time, we are likely to assume these unconscious compensations as our normal way of being. And this, in turn, creates other blocks, other tensions, other compensations, and it goes on and on until we find ourselves in a constricted body-mind that is quite far from its natural state and deprived from its potential. Through sensing, hearing, feeling, we invite the opening and the release of these contracted, restricted patterns, whether emotional, physical, or mental. When the body-mind is not able to enter an area of hold, we can use structured, guided anatomical imagery, and this can help our senses remember a more effective bodily alignment. Our senses' intelligence can then retune joint position and mobility. We can also do hands-on partner work to help the body-mind access, feel a physical or emotional blind spot that needs unwinding in order to transform and become sensitive again. We revisit early developmental patterns, both human and evolutionary, to assist the recovery of our body-mind memory. All body tissues are intelligent. They receive, perceive, respond, transform. They each have a way of exploring on their own. When the body tissues are in full sensual contact with the living Earth, they can yield into her, feel her intelligence, her body-mind. If we listen closely, each organ, muscle, fluid, cell, who all carry their own memories and experiences as a story that wants to be told. I am inspired to learn more about who and where we are, to be deeply rooted in my body-mind, in nature, the community and place I live in. Once rooted, we have a chance to hear all the living voices of the organic and non-organic world. 
In waking up to their stories, we wake up to our own.